everybody. How are you doing on this fine Sunday evening? We got three points. But we also got kicked out of a tournament because we didn't get three points. So we're going to talk a lot about that tonight, but should be a lot of fun tonight and this, uh, you know, inner Miami conversation. So I am Peter Brown. And as always, as you know, I don't do this by myself. Everybody's favorite uncle, Uncle Ed, joins me. How you doing, Ed? Uh, don't use messages. Pass me my coffee, Peter Brown. Nice. Uh, God, I've got my very- coffee right here. I got to tell you, she's really uh, disappointed that we uh, didn't beat the Mexicans, man. So we're, didn't we're, beat uh, the Mexicans. <laughs> we didn't beat the Mexicans. So we're going to talk about that and who we think is the cause of all that. I, Dude, I've been getting on Reddit lately a lot, and people are just going after uh, Mr. Tata. So let's let's talk about that in a bit. Yeah, that's why I thought it might be an interesting topic for tonight. And I asked you if it was already too late to have that conversation because, you know, we won a game. And so you want to you want to celebrate the win. But that loss, that loss is still in our gut and it's still a little bitter. And it's not even the loss. It's how we lost. And and the way he played those two games, which is concerning. Yeah. So we'll get to a lot of that tonight. But before we get to all that. Uh, as always, guys, the chat room is open. Let's get busy in the chat. I only see a few people in. Maybe it's a slow Sunday evening, but let's get active in the chat and start talking. And because, um, you know, your your conversations are going to be important tonight. Because I want to kind of get a feeling from our our viewers as a where you lean. You know, I, I put on the on the thumbnail kind of a yes, no. Where do you lean? So I want to I want I kind of want to pull our 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 chatters live tonight as much as we possibly can so get live on the chat and also um oops um da, 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 voicemail if you want to leave us a voicemail give us a call at 786-474-4435 i've got a few voicemails already one from an old favorite that is and i use the the word favorite very loosely very very loosely but uh, we have a few, so there's, there's definitely room to jump on if you want to, uh, you know, rail a little bit. So anyways, before we get that too far, let's say a big thank you to Canesware. Canesware, I'm telling you, look at that wall of, me- it is a messy wall. A messy wall. Wow. Look at all that. What a messy wall. Best prices <laughs> in town. If you want to get any inner Miami gear, this is the best place to get it. They have the best prices better than in the stadium. You know, I've used this story many times. I bought the the uh pink uh rain jacket. I spent about $20 less at Caneswear. So go to caneswear.com and all orders over $99 ship for free or go to the store located Davie, Florida, south of 595 on University Drive. Great place. FM10 for a discount FMTV10. That's it. And Peter Brown, Mia Rodriguez, the goat of all realtors in South Florida. She's the one you got to talk to if you want to sell your property, if you want to buy something. Talk to her. She's, I mean, she, she speaks three languages. She's on TV. She's like famous and stuff. Send her a WhatsApp. If you guys want to make that money, want to spend that money, Mia Rodriguez is a person to go to. And, you know, Ed, I've heard that that interest rates might be going down soon. So that's now good, might be a good time to buy. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, that's kind of what I've heard. Some rumblings that interest rates for houses might be going down. So give give me a, 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 a ring. She should know and uh, help you get into that new house. Do it. Engage. All right. Totally. And least of, uh, last but not least is H-O-B, hands up on builders you want to uh, build on a piece of property you want your custom made home to your dreams you know your your custom home builder we build your dreams to reality plus they can uh, renovate your home if you want to do that great guys local hob for you.com or call 833-267-8305 and you know, uh, Peter, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, the the bear himself also yeah. is going to renovate one of his rooms. He's going to make his. Uh, I was going to almost said bat cave. No, his uh, his uh, his uh, bear cave. Yeah, where he goes 
hibernate. So he's going to fix that up and the HLB for you is going to do it for him. Nice. When you're a single guy, though, isn't every part of your house your your cave? You would think so. <laughs> he's uh, he's always you want to leave most of the house kind of like neutral and, you know, and approachable. And then that one room you go all out. You know, it's kind of funny because uh, the bear was having problems taking an iguana out of his pool. He put a picture up on social media. I totally forgot to tell you. I didn't see that. Yeah, it's on his social media. If you guys want to check it out, Makotonio uh, 10, I think it is, or something like that. You can see it on our uh, social media, but go and check it out. An iguana in his pool. He, he wanted to know how to take an iguana out. The guy's a bear, and he can't figure out how to take, you know, the, the darn toot and critter out of the pool i'll tell you 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 take your pool net and you scoop that sucker out and then just go "Ah!" (laughs) throw yeah Yeah, just the same way i I probably that but you got to make that sound (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah man not not the man of sounds uh peter brown by the way (laughs) no but when you're dealing with a reptile in your pool that you're not cool with you know and they're ugly they're ugly uh yeah, and we'll we'll get to this. There's some conversations already happening in the chat. But before we get too far, let's say hi to those those of you that are in the chat. And I'll start off with the first person I see in here, and that is Oops, I wrong one. I, I wanted to hit the other window. Uh B King is here. Uh hello, yeah. boys and girls. Nice to get three points yesterday. Followed by one world one goal, who's always here. Louis Rodriguez. Louis Rodriguez. I have been watching Louis online. He seems to be having a bit of a uh, a social media war with our very own photographer, Chris Arjun. Him and Chris really? Arjun going at it. Disagreements. We might have to have him as guests. We'd love to see them rumbling on the live uh, video. Disagreements about topics like Tata or formation or... Things like that. So interesting, interesting. Uh, Lori, Larry, I'm sorry, Larry Oncom. I'm sure I'm saying your last name wrong, is here. Uh, Caesar, our friend Caesar is here as well. Love Caesar. Marvin Miela is from Ecuador. All right. Ecuador Mafia in the house. What? What? <laughs> Esteban Dido, welcome back. It's good to see you two weeks in a row. It's been it's been a while. It's good to see you back. Defense is shaky, but overall exciting match. Yes. I had one song that came to my mind throughout this entire game, and I'll talk about it. I, I wanted to play the song, but it'll get copyright strikes, so I didn't do it. I played a couple of seconds. I think. No, you can't really. Last time I did, we did any kind of music. I played like two notes of like back of black or something for whom. Oh, for whom the bell tolls. That was uh, we were pl- the bell for a campana. It didn't. Yeah, like two seconds of the song, and we were no good. I don't know. I don't know how some people could do it, but we can't. I don't. I don't get it. Yeah, they don't. YouTube, like this. stupid YouTube. Mike V is here, and he says Tata out. All right, one vote for Tata out. We're going to get to that. Oliver M. No Tata. Time for Tata. No Tata. Time for Tata. So which is it? It's time for Tata or it's no Tata. I don't get it. Uh, Damien Guzman is here as well. There's about to be two Beckhams for football and football. I don't get that. Oh, is that because uh, the former Giants receiver Beckham is, uh, I forgot his first name. Going to be coming to the Dolphins, maybe? Is that what you're talking wow. about? Going to be, uh, yeah. Freddie Diaz. Freddie. Freddie. Freddie's here. And then last but not least is B-Jam. Time's up for Tata. Oof, oof. Our listeners might be done with Tata. Right off the bat, before we get too, too far, they're done with Tata. Um, Esteban bringing up a question that was funny based on my opening comments about uh the Bears uh, house saying, Peter, are you insinuating when one is married, it all belongs to the wife? That's how <laughs> I just heard, my, wait, hang on. You guys couldn't hear it, but my wife from the hallway says, yes. <laughs> what, I would, wife, what would you say about that, Ed? Yeah, everything's hers, man. That's, that's, how, that, that's how it goes down. 
Her money's so, her money. My money's her money. I wouldn't go that far, but it's compromised, right? And and let's be honest. In my house, the design elements of my house, it's more me than my wife. <laughs> really? But she lets me. That's at the end of the day, right? She, she right. lets me. So same thing. Yeah, she probably doesn't care. She's probably like, yeah, whatever. You know, but let's be honest. My room to have fun with, to put up mm-hmm. stupid stuff on the walls, yeah, is this one little square box that I have right. that is called That's- my office. Your so, sanctuary, your man cave, sort of, but it's really small to be a cave. I mean, it's a man like little hole or oh. something. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I don't know if it counts as a, a full on cave, mm-hmm. but anyways, hey, before we get too far, let's let's do this because we got one right off the bat, and so we'll start off with the good stuff first, <laughs> and that is Caesar. It's giving us a super chat, $2 super chat. Thank you, Caesar. MVP against Sporting KC was Gomez. I got to agree. The guy was on fire. Uh, I, I was one of the guys that was criticizing Tata because he was putting him on so much and he was just not, he was losing the ball left and right. And I think it was like for, I don't know, the past how many games that he played, at least last year in the beginning, he was just, you know, playing terrible, I thought. And now he just, you know, all, all the insistence that Tata has done with this player to put him as a starter is finally paying off. Yeah. And, you know, it's something that Taylor Twelman, uh, you know, on Twitter keeps harping on that fact that there's all these European scouts out there that know something. So, you know, those scouts, Taylor, I guess, and Tata know something that we didn't see in the beginning. It took a while. It took a little bit. Yeah. It took a little while. For it to, to come into fruition. But yeah, Faria, he's been a very Faria's different for, player this year. Farias came in and he was on fire since the beginning. Redondo was on fire since the beginning. Redondo's looked great from the very beginning. Yeah. As well, Eric Thomas checking in. And uh, some more people. Um, Oh, yeah, Mr. Krabs is here as well now. Not to mention Tata previously coached Prime Barcelona and didn't win anything. Yeah, we'll get to we'll get to that. But the 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 good feeling was yesterday. And yesterday, when I, I was telling you, I was teased that watch, watch, I told you guys I sent you a little meme. When I was watching yesterday's game, one song came to my mind. And I think it's not just that game, but it's this season. Even if you think about one of the goals in the Champions Cup, thanks to Calendar, it's if you guys are familiar with the Red Hot Chili Peppers, it's it's the song "Give It Away, Give It Away, Give It Away Now." Give it away, give it away, give it away now. I mean, that's what this team's mantra seems to be. They love to give the ball away as much as possible into anybody up on the other team. You want a goal? Say- you get it, Team Peter. We're a generous team. We we like to give. We're very giving. Very giving. We want to make every game enjoyable for the fans. We don't want them to feel so bad. So we'll give them the ball every once in a while. You know? We're, just We'll catch up. We're ge- yeah, okay. we're good at catching up. Not in Mexico, but we're good at catching up. We caught up in, in, in Kansas City. Yeah. And won. Which is good. And and they learned from us. And one of the goals that they gave up was a giveaway as well. They were learning from us. We were able to teach and to give away the knowledge of how yeah. to give it's it a, away. Give it away now. We are that giving. We are willing to give away our knowledge on how to give it away. Right. And uh, I mean, that, that that doesn't they, get any better. Yeah, that, you know, I know it sounds redundant, but it's true. And I yeah, want to hear I, that song in the stadium. I now want to hear that stadium and song in the stadium. Like here, Lionel uh, Monaco says, Gressel is so generous. Gressel's been generous, but I, I I'm thinking Gressel, and I think I sent this to you guys in a, in our WhatsApp group. I just think he's tired. Tata's putting him in different positions all the time. The dude's confused. I'm confused. I don't even he's know what not position. What we were promised. Right, but he's he's covering every hole that that's there, no. and that's what Tata's 
confusing. He's active like. and 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 at times I think he's making the right decisions. But you know, when they tell you that he is the best crosser in the league, and then you see some of his recent crosses, you're like, Really? Yeah. Is he? Is he really? I don't know, man. He's uh yeah, definitely hasn't been crossing that much. Um, it's also because we really don't have a point, man. And I, 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 what's his name? Uh, Suarez isn't, yeah, he's good with, he can, he can head the ball in and everything, but that's just not, you know, if we had Campana, maybe, you know, he would be like that point, man, the guy that he's looking for the, the head connection, Borgelin maybe. But, uh, but also, like I said, uh, Gressel's been playing different positions, you know, sometimes he's playing in the back, sometimes in the front, you know, and then it's just middle of the park. He's everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, so it's just, you know, I, that, that's one of the things that I'm also concerns me. Like, he, he thinks that um, um, Noah Allen's a defender. You know he's he's more of a left back. That's his position. But Noah Tata, Allen is, yeah. is depth. Noah Allen should not be starting unless we're playing, I guess, like Colorado or something. I don't know. In MLS play here and there, he could start for depth and things like that. But he should not be starting. Right, and they used them against the Mexican team. Um, right. and it- yeah, let's let's get into that a little bit. Change topic a hair, and just get into kind of you know a little bit of that game and and that game management, and and I think at the core why so many people are questioning whether now is the time to start firing Tata. I'm going to start right off the bat saying I think it's too soon. You mentioned last week you think he has at least till the end of the season. Um, yeah. But I think he still has to officially be on the hot seat. When you bring out your formation, your five-man back, that, I don't know, Ed, have we won a game with a five-man back? Can you think of a game that we've won? I don't think we have we have that formation. It should be taboo. It should be prohibited. Jorge Ma should be like, Tata, stop it already. Stop. That's not, you know, we it, he just insists on doing that. It, it didn't work against Monterrey. It doesn't work against MLS teams. It just We just don't have the players to play that way. And every time that, as far as my memory serves, every time we play with four men in the back, we win or we at least represent well right and here against kansas city we played four in the back and guess what we came out we came from behind it still wasn't an easy thing but we won the game i'm not trying to compare monterey with mexico with uh monterey with uh kansas city because at the end of the day i didn't think we were going to win the game anyways i honestly didn't i was hopeful that we would but i didn't think we would I also didn't think it would be three to one. I don't know. It just it looked worse than the than than you know the fact that just that we lost. I I was not you know look. There's so many reasons and so many issues with MLS teams going into Mexico and expecting a victory. Forget about us being some super team or anything with Messi. It's just look our Ruiz on our starting lineup would never be on the squad for Monterey. Not forget about being a starter. He's not good enough to be on the squad, but he's our starter. The problems go deeper than just Tata. It's MLS and and the fact that you know we can't spend as much money as a team like Monterey. So beyond our three top players, three or four top players, it's a huge drop off. And Mex and, and Monterey does not have that big of a drop off. So right. I mean, there's a lot outside of i'd say tata's control but when he kind of rolls out the same formation that we've already proven doesn't work you gotta question him and and peter another thing and i want to backtrack a little bit more to the very All first right. month that we saw a uh, vip by the way that video you could check out too uh it's you know it's a game that we had to win and yeah we got the you know reese got the red card that you know that that's when everything went you know south and we lost the game but i think that tata should have made i mean he brought in two guys 
that weren't proven. Two guys that had just come up from uh, uh, from Inter Miami too. He brought in Casas. He brought in uh, Afonso. Uh, when he should have brought in Campana, who's definitely the better forward, you know, than Afonso. The guy that, you know, you throw a center in there, he could probably hit it with his head and put it in. Hell, he could have put in Borgelin. You know, it's just, why did he do that? Two unproven players well, that, I mean. I would argue, I would right now, after what I've seen from Afonso in a little bit of time, and one of those games was an Inter-Miami 2 game that I did go to, so I'm a little bit jaded, I guess, or biased. I would take Afonso over Borgelin. I like Afonso. I think he's got promise. But I get your point about Campana. But for for this past game, Campana wasn't available. So yeah, he was. All right, let's get to, go to a couple of chats here. And, and uh, Eric Thomas is saying, give Tata to midseason at the very least. It's fair. I think you might even give him to the maybe the end of League's Cup. How do we look in League's Cup? Are we embarrassed in League's Cup? Um, you know, I know some people out there are are really, and I'm 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 reading a lot of stuff lately from some old friends of ours that uh, are a little jaded on MLS and more so on the lower levels. Uh, but because I'm interested in that as well. But a League's Cup is getting a lot of hate, partially because, hey, that, that League's Cup is part of the reason we have a crowded schedule, which means that's part of the reason we're not in the Open Cup, and I get all that. But I think it's still a valid competition, playing against Mexican teams that are good. We're taking away their home field advantage by playing here. That's not quite fair to them. But um, So I'd say maybe at least give them to that, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, he needs to he needs to do uh, you know have results, man. If he doesn't win that tournament, I mean, uh, um, uh, Don Bear is saying that he needs to win League's Cup and MLS Cup. Okay, well, Florida man, for example, is saying we're in first place for crying out loud. Basically, I'm going to add to it. Stop your whining. Stop your bitching. We're in first place. I'm adding to it, Florida man. I'm reading between the lines. I think that's what you meant. Right. Uh, right. And he's right. We are in first place in the East with one game in hand. So really, in reality, we're tied with the Red Bulls on points. So if one game in hand, I think you'd really put us in second or third place if you, you know, if all things are even. If you look at Philadelphia, there are two games. They have two extra games they haven't played. Right. So, so they could leapfrog they, they, us real quick. We yeah, could them. There's another team, Atlanta, also. They have like it, two games left. And it's so tight. Um, we can actually, you know, even bring that up. It's, it's, uh, let's see how this works. It's, oops, you're not here, Ed. Cause the last time I did this, you weren't here. Uh, oh, let's do that. that. Let's do that. There you are. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's that easy guys. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we're in first place with 15 points, tied with New York with 15 points, but we've got one ga game in hand. So really, depending on what they do, and they have beat us. So Philadelphia is right there in in um, in third place, like you said, with two games in hand. Uh, um, in hand, they could easily pass us. Two two. Same two ties and they're probably ahead of us or at least yeah. tied with us. Right. So, and you know, not right. if let's say we lost two games and they tied two games. Right. So Atlanta. it is very, very tight. Even your, your fifth place team is only one win away. Atlanta, like you're talking about a win and a tie away. It is so tight in the MLS, uh, you know, season. And it's still super early. So, you know, Boom. Uh also let me get to a couple other things I had I highlighted. Mike V saying, none of the players are really the problem. It's the coach and the training the players are getting. Let's talk about the training for a minute, Ed. We've got three listed currently hamstring injuries. We got Messi just coming back from one, so but we've got currently three listed. We all watched Alba in last night's game, and I haven't seen any reports yet, but it sure did look like another hamstring. Yep. So now we're talking four hamstrings 
and four knee injuries. Our old buddy, Mr. Glass, is now listed as a knee injury. He's been there for a little while, but um, at one point he was listed as, uh, I don't know, questionable, sick. I don't remember what it was, but now it's listed as a knee injury. You really need to start questioning and looking into that training staff. What the heck is going on? And I know we've talked about this a little bit in the past where some people said it's because they're not training enough and others say maybe it's too much. I don't know where that, I'm not, I'm no trainer. I don't know. I should talk to my son about that. My son is an actual trainer. Um, So I should talk to him about it. What do you think about the hamstrings? Ed, Ed, let me ask you. Do you want to do you want do you, we're, this team seems to be just we're in the mode of giving things away today. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Now, would you like a hamstring? We're giving away hamstrings here at Inter Miami. Everybody gets a hamstring. You want one? I'll take one. I'll take a hamstring. Yeah. Do you want a hamstring? Yeah, that way I can, uh, you know, take a few days off from work. Right, there why you not? go. Get a few days of rest. Anybody in the chat want a hamstring injury? Free <laughs> hamstring injuries for anybody today. Today. On, well, all season long, the way it's going, but yeah, that's that's very concerning because this comes from last season too. We had we had a lot of injuries, you know. We sure just did. been right with the injuries. Some people are saying that it's probably because of that, you know, the world tour that we took. Also, that didn't help. That's right, Mike V saying something's weird, something's wrong, too many injuries. Yeah. It, it is a question because you know they've changed they've changed over the years they've changed the staff as far as you know their training staff and I know they had a woman in charge for a little while then she left English woman that I think um, Neville brought in um, then she left um, so I don't know who's in charge now but no matter who's in charge we have these same problems and. And, you know, I, I, I think I saw in the comments something. Oh, here he goes. Uh, sports shorts, a little buddy sports shorts says, uh, I think the heat wears them down. I don't buy that. I've watched soccer teams in South Florida for many, many years. I'm old. And I've never seen this many injuries f- for so, you know, consistently. Right. I mean, you may see a season where, you know, you get hit with a lot of injuries, but not so much consistently. Every season, just getting hit and hit and hit, and I mean, look, Miami Fusion played in the in this in this heat. Fort Lauderdale Strikers of every version played in this heat. Miami FC currently plays in this heat, and and I do follow them, and I don't hear that they have this kind of a injury issue. Right? No, yeah, just uh, it is kind of weird. It is kind of fishy. I mean, all those years we had like the Miami Fusion, they they didn't have that many injuries, man. From no. what I remember, no. uh, the strike. Back in the day, also they and had I was, all these. Yeah, I was closer to the the new the, the latest version of the Strikers. I was in the press box every week, and I was around part of the media and stuff like that. And so it was never an epidemic. Yeah, you had injured players, but it was not like an epidemic like it is here with Inter Miami. We were we are the league leader in injuries. Right. I don't know where we are this week, but I know for two weeks ago we had. The lead in the injury list. We had seven, I think, and the closest we, uh, behind us was five. We also lead in goals, Peter Brown. Well, which is goals good. against. But we might also leave. Yeah, do we lead in goals against? I don't know, but I think it's pretty close. <laughs> goals for and goals against. I think it might be pretty close. And that and that's that's what I think they they were betting on. Tata was like betting on us having this incredible, you know, uh, attacking team. That they would probably think, well, we don't need a defense if we, we have an offense, you know? The well, best defense was, is offense. Well, I said that uh, some time ago when, you know, we, we talk about this team. It's like, well, they're obviously just planning on beating everybody four to three, something like that. Like, you know, we can outscore you, but we're going to give up a lot of goals, but we're going to outscore you yeah. as, the, as, the, as the hope. Um, thing. Give it away now. We should have put that as a title. Give it away, give it away, give it away now. That's we get that's a that, man, that's the theme song for this team. I don't think that has to go away anytime so, soon. Um, all right, here we go. Another, another super chat from our buddy Caesar. We need to stay in playoff contention on our own merit. 
with wins and not relying on others to lose or tie games. I'll take a groin injury, LOL. <laughs> All right, Caesar, you get a you get a, a groin injury. We're giving away hamstrings. Groin yeah, I injuries, know, but- I don't know. Is a hamstring a groin injury? I don't think it's the same thing. I'm not sure. Well, Kramoski had the the uh, groin injury. Sports hernia. Sports hernia. Yeah. So to his point, and I was actually on uh, Forestine Fires show uh, this past Friday, um, talking about it, and and I don't think I did such a great job of, of talking. I was like my mind was somewhere else. He'd ask a question, and I think I'd answered it wrong or answered whatever I thought. But but one of the things I I did bring up was that like what is our goal for this year? And at this point. Um, if, if champions cup was our number one goal, what is our secondary goal? And and you'd say probably the next most important tournament that we have is MLS cup. Leagues cup does not have the importance yet. It's laughed at a little bit. It's considered a, a manufactured tournament, which then again, isn't everything manufactured. Uh, but, but, uh, MLS cup. And I, and so I'd say basically we just need to be in contention. We need to be within we need to be able to host playoff game, right? We need to be in the in the first round of the playoffs when you have a home and away. Is a you know and and uh, you know you, you it's a what three games I think they you know it's yeah. one home game, one away game, and then the the person that has the advantage has the third game if needed, and so we need right. to be in that position. So I don't think we need to worry about supporter shield. I don't think we need to worry about necessarily being in first place. We need to get a good head start now because we're going to lose a lot of players throughout the the uh, Copa America and all the other tournaments. But in reality, we just need to be in play in in the top what three or four so that we can host a playoff game. Right. <clears throat> so yeah, we- that's uh, that's that's going to be the only thing we could do. I don't think we 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 should concentrate on supporters shield because yeah, there's not going to be enough players. I think the way injuries are going, the way the all the tournaments that are coming up, uh, it's just you know we shouldn't even think about that. All right, let's 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 do this, Ed. Let's go to a, a, a few voicemails and uh, go from there. It's time for your voicemail. Hello. This is Ted from Coconut Bay Creek Drive, Lane Coconut uh, Grove. Also Coral Gables. Anyway, I just got Saturday night. I just watched the game. Um, I don't, I don't love Tata Martino, um, but they are in first place right now. Uh, true, they have a game in hand, so. I don't know if they're, like, truly in first place in the way that they should be. I feel like they're underachieving this year, but they won tonight 3-2 over Sporting Kansas City. Uh, positives, Diego Gomez, uh, he's really putting together a nice season. He, he makes a couple of bloopers here and there, a couple of blunders, but in general, he's turning into a really nice player. So much so that, uh, as Taylor Twelman keeps telling us, that uh, there are scouts in Europe looking at him. So I don't even know if he'll be at Inter Inter Miami for too long. But anyway, Diego Gomez, uh, Messi, obviously, uh, they have not lost this year with Messi in the lineup. They are, I believe, two wins, two draws, three wins and two draws or something like that with Messi in the lineup. So, uh, yeah, um, obviously his goal was really good. His assist to Diego Gomez for the goal was really good. Um, uh, Franco Negri, uh, I really like him too. He's, uh, I'm glad he's back. Uh, Kramoski looked good in the limited time he had. Some of the negatives, not, not too good of a game for Avilas. Uh, I'm really sick of the, the blunders in the back, especially like giving away the ball deep in their own territory. It's the same thing that happened to in the Monterey games. Um, there were some really bad giveaways in that series. Uh, I almost feel like they they really could have made it close without some of the bad giveaways, and they're not improving on that. It's just the same bad giveaways that we've seen since last year. 
same bad giveaways we've seen since the Ben Sweat days, if you recall. Um, I don't know. I'm, uh, you know, it's just really, really exciting having these guys here this year. Busquets, uh, you know, all of them. Just too bad about the injuries. Too bad Redondo's not playing. Would be even better. I think we could even beat teams like Monterey if we had Redondo healthy. But anyway, good stuff overall. I would just like to see t- better formations from Tata. I'd like to see less bloopers in the back. And, uh, yeah, Diego Gomez and Messi, and uh, if everyone's healthy, they, they really, I see no reason why they shouldn't win MLS Cup. All right, he's got a winning MLS Cup and tired of the blunders in the back. That's that's also a good uh, show title. Blunders in the back. Mm-hmm. I like that. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, for the most part, I expected uh, Ted to be a lot more negative. I thought he was going to totally ask for his head, but you know, I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised because sometimes he'll send me a text message here and there, and I'm thinking, and he was pretty negative, but I guess he had some, uh, those three points, winning those three points, I think helped a lot. Yeah, and, uh, and 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 as you mentioned, the you know I think had Callender not given you know made that blunder in the back in Monterey, I think the game could have been different. I think that really gave the momentum to Monterey because if you look at the game here in Florida, yes, we lost, but we held our own without Messi. Yeah. I mean, we had that game for the most part until uh, you know card. Ruiz got the red card. And then it all of a sudden it changed. So I thought going into Monterey, I still, I, at, the, at my core, I thought it was going to be challenging and we might not win, right? But um, based on what I saw in, in at Chase Stadium, I thought, well, we got a chance when now Messi is playing, Suarez is in, everybody's in. But I think that that blunder in the back really did kind of set things in the wrong direction. And then we got to talk about and we have one more call I want to get to in just a minute, but we have to talk about about um, Tata not making any substitutions in that second game. We didn't really talk about that in this so far. Uh, zero substitutions. Now I know that was a that's part of the heated conversation I saw between Chris Arjun and and uh, and Luis. Uh, you know, very different opinions. No substitution. Tata came out and basically said that the people on the bench weren't good enough to play in this game. What would wow. you think, Ed? No, I think we still needed, uh, you know, fresh legs in there. Uh, you know, if anything, to conserve our older players, the ones that we're going to need for, you know, thankfully they didn't get injured and we, so they all played for uh, for the game against uh, Sporting Kansas City. But, um you know, it's just it, uh, to bring, uh, just for me, it didn't make sense that that he um, like in the first game putting the wrong people, I think, and in the second game he didn't put any people. I just think he was wrong for doing that. I think you know we have decent players that could fill the role. At that point, we dude, we we already lost the game. So, so exactly. So why not throw them in? You know, if they're not first back- off, my thought is. We have that that weakened back, uh, you know, bench because of injuries, right? We all know we have too many injuries, and that's why we have our weakened bench. They didn't even bring the full amount of of uh, bench players that they could have brought. They didn't have them, and and so yeah, it, there it's a young bench because that's what we got. But I still am of of the feeling that. If you're good enough to be on the bench, you're good enough to be on the field, right? right? Maybe not as a starter, but once, look, we at one point, we pretty much had lost the game, right? Why not bring some of these guys in, give them the experience, if nothing else, and, and, and maybe, just maybe, one of those inexperienced guys that aren't scared because they got, they don't, they're not, they're too young to be scared, right? They're still dumb, right? right. <laughs> they're, Afonso, for example, doesn't know enough to be scared of the other team. He's just, you know, go to go headstrong and just do what he does. And he might just do something different enough to end with a positive result. Maybe it would have been 3 2. Maybe we still would have lost the game. But at least you'd show, 
that you know there is some 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 talent on the bench give them an opportunity and maybe maybe there'd be somebody with an idea that's different than those tired legs that are on the field yeah um yeah i, I gotta tell you um uh, that w- i, I would have been uh, alfonso would have done what he could in that game he would have given it his all because he, they already played him the first game why not just put him on this exactly one? he was good enough to play in the first one now he's not right yeah so you know, and, and look, at the end of the day, those might have been our best players, but it wasn't working. What do you have to lose other than the game? And you already lost, basically were losing the game. We're so no, why it. not just throw anything up on the wall and see if it sticks? Throw that spaghetti <laughs> all against the refrigerator. See if it sticks. Yeah, see if it's cooked. <laughs> and, and that's I what I do. That. I don't, know. I don't understand that. And then when he goes out in the media and sits and says and tells everybody that the bench is not experienced enough, what does that say to those younger players? And now this argument that I saw going on online between two guys, one guy saying, well, they're all, you know, the coach doesn't have to be nice. You know, they're professionals. They need to toughen up. I, I call BS to that because everybody needs positive reinforcement everybody needs to be motivated i don't care if you're a professional i don't care what level you are every even messy needs to be motivated and trust me i think that sh- that dust up that fight or whatever that he had in the locker room at chase stadium probably was that motivation for him he may not need the motivation from the coach but he needed some sort of motivation right and <laughs> still wasn't enough but Everybody needs some sort of motivation. Everybody needs a pat on the back from their manager. And look, I, I'm not the best at doing this. If you know, I, I manage people and that is one of my weaknesses is that I don't give enough credit where credit should be given to, to kind of build up my team. You know, sometimes I need to step back and say, I need to give a shout out to one of my team members and I don't do it enough. So I could definitely, you know, kind of recognize when it's not being done because I'm guilty of it too. Right. So, yeah, I mean, um, I'm seeing all the messages, dude, I just, I've, we've been on this program for so long and I just realized I've got the uh, comments on the right hand side. I pressed the button and there it is. And this whole time I was using my phone. Oh yeah. It's been available to you this whole time. I never look at it from your side. I never look at it from your side. So I clicked on it and I was like, Oh, there's like, so I've been just like, they're all there. (laughs) Well, good. You can pay attention. It's only been like five years. Uh, right. <laughs> Whoopsie. Yeah, we were the first ones to come up with this stuff. So with these, um, you know, well, even longer than that. But yeah, we're, we're, we're the OGs. Here, Florida man bringing up a good point. Negri and Kermoski should have been subbed in soon or, you know, at, sooner at all. I mean, he's, I think, speaking of maybe this last game um, where Negri came in. So, yeah, again, going back to that championship cup game negri's experienced enough to come in he was healthy didn't bring him in kramoski might have still been a little bit on the fence but he had already played um it for the inter miami two game and he looked good so i think and he's kind of really shined before his injury so yeah i think i think these are all valid reasons for you to start questioning Tata. And I don't think he's going to get fired anytime soon, but I think he should be on alert. Yeah, especially, you know, um, if he doesn't win, I think he'll be gone if he doesn't win a championship, any championship at right. this point. Yeah, no yeah, trophies, he, you're out the door. No, I think that's simple as that, right? With this club, yeah. with this with this group, you're expected to win a championship. All right, let's go to another voicemail. It's time for your voicemail. <laughs> Hello. Woohoo! We won. Hey, it's Italia One World One Goal. Hey, Peter and Uncle Ed and all the great fans out there and Don Bear doing the show in Espanol on Monday night. Get that if you guys haven't seen it. We're going early these days at 8.30 on Mondays. Um, woo! On the Tata subject, it's interesting because I pulled a Peter and I have various, uh, I got a new TV, so I had various, like, um, trial thingies, like he had done when he cut the cord and it is interesting the app is really good the apple app 
which, but that's nine ninety nine a month, and then the the MLS package is fourteen ninety nine. So I don't know if you want to continue with the twenty five ninety nine or whatever that equals. I got thoughts. But it is like amazing. Messi looked very pretty on my TV. So thank you, team, for coming back from what looked like a misery with a quick early goal, and then they were able to come back and a couple times and get the win. So, relating to your question on the coach, it's interesting because I'm listening to Paramount Plus with our all-time favorite, Ray Hudson. Um, I'm replaying one of the Champions League games, which happens to be Newcastle, where he had played. And he's also talking about, this was back in December, that team was really thin with injuries and how the coach was not able to rest, um, you know, just didn't have enough subs, wasn't able to rest his players, giving them like 20 25, even 30 minutes off in a match, which is what you require when you're playing two and three games a week. So it's really bizarre because he said that back in December and about a team in England, and it applies very particularly to us. People were flipping out that Tata didn't make any subs in the Champions game in Mexico, but he said he looked down the bench and there's just he didn't feel there was anyone to put in. No, no offense on the guys on the bench, but it would... You know, if he if he didn't, other teams apparently had lost like six nothing and nine to three and these horrific scores that were within our you know with our MLS playing Mexico this year, Mexican teams this year. So he, you know, you rather suffer a smaller defeat than a no. humiliation. At that point, he's just stemming the bleeding, realizing we've you know once Messi couldn't play that first leg. And you see, Messi was not as sharp, but he still was able to pull it out. And, I mean, he's like the Michael Jordan or LeBron James of of uh, of uh, soccer, you know. And we're expecting him to win every game. He's going to be 37 in June, which actually shares the birthday with my mom that she likes because, you know, his, his family is actually Italian descent, so my mom says uh, maybe he's a long-lost cousin. But anyway... Um, you know, we're expecting this guy to pull miracles out of a hat every week and twice a week. You know, it's a lot. It's what what You see the magic of what we have with the fusion that was a ragtag team. Oh, she has a part, too. Let me get to that real quick. It's shorter. So I might have got cut off at Italia again. Yeah, my point is, unless we bring in a bigger name like like um, Javi, 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 whatever his name is, Javi, from... Um, you know, Messi's buddies or uh, Zidane or somebody that's a huge recognizable name, I don't really see the point of changing for, you know, somebody that's coming in from another country we don't really know that doesn't have as big a name as Messi. There's really no point, I think, because they're going to have to learn MLS all over again. And, again, we had so many injuries. Okay, love you guys. Love the show. Peace out. All right, a few things. First off, on her comment about Apple TV, she said Apple TV is $9.99 and then MLS season pass is $14.99. You do not need to have both. So, because she was like, I don't know if it's worth the $25. You can only pay for one. If you only want MLS season pass, pay $14.99 and that's it. You do not need to pay the $9.99. $9.99 gives you all the Apple TV plus shows. And there's some good shows. There's a new one on there I want to see uh, called Sugar. I want to see that one about a detective. And um, it's got Colin Farrell in it. it look, Colin? Yeah, I think that's the name. Looks good. Uh, but like film noir type of thing. But you don't have to uh, get the Apple TV Plus subscription in order to have season pass. So just saying that. Then the other thought that I had when she was talking, Ed, was that she'd rather... She, she mentioned as far as not making the subs or whatever and, 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 and being protecting yourself against losing 6 nothing, 9 nothing, whatever the scores are. I'd rather lose 9 nothing and throw everything I have at that team to at least walk away from that game saying, you know what? I gave it everything we had. I, gave, I threw the kitchen sink at that team and it just wasn't enough. At least... I, then you can sit there and say, MLS, we are not good enough as a league. We need to say, look, we need to look at loosening up the the salary caps and all the, the rules and all that. Uh, and they're they're planning on doing that. We could talk about that maybe next week. Uh, 
I read a detailed article about it. Um, but but I'd rather throw the kitchen sink at the other team. Right, right. I, I agree with you on that, man. I, I, you know, and Mike B was also saying I'd rather lose trying than losing not trying, and I agree. Amen. Uh, we had to throw everything in the kitchen sink at these guys and and try to do whatever we could to try to at least uh, you know save face. At that point, we probably wouldn't have you know once it got three to one, you know chances were we weren't. Well, once it was three zero, chances are are we weren't gonna you know bounce back. But we did get one goal back, so you know it's it is what it is. Uh, I just think. Uh, uh, he, he had unfortunate, an unfortunate uh, comments uh, towards a team that they weren't right. good enough. I just think it's it's he didn't he didn't well, have an answer for for Monterrey. He didn't uh, you know in all his his experience he just gave up. That's what it comes down to. Leonel yeah, Monaco says a loss is a loss. Why not try? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, one world defending herself saying, but if he subbed and we went six to one, his head would be rolled. Look, his head's rolling now. Again, I think I'd rather, I'd rather throw it all. I'd rather throw it all out there and say, we tried instead of saying, well, they weren't good enough. Anyways, speaking of, of, of where Tata is in, in this Taylor Twelman had posted something, um, that I wanted to bring up and I don't know if it's a fair comparison, but he said Taylor uh, brought up the point that what if you what if I told you that Tata Martino has a lower win percentage in MLS than Phil Neville did at Inter Miami? Would you believe me? Neville finished his spell in South Florida with a win rate of just thirty eight point nine percent, while currently Martino is at thirty eight point two. Interesting how this group recovers before the summer. Do they go on a run before Copa America? And all that. So, in a sense, you could say it's an unfair comparison because you know it was still early in the season, and Phil had a couple of years uh, to work on that. But it's a good point because we ran Phil out of town. People didn't want to hear it. People just complained about Phil every minute. We ran him out of town. So, you know, oh, yeah. one world, one gold, calling Taylor wrong. Taylor's wrong. Tata has more ties. <laughs> Look at loss percentage more. I don't know. I I I I'm sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna trust Taylor. I like Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> and it brings up it just brings up a good interesting topic in that you know we ran we ran um, Neville out of town. We didn't like him, and here we have Tata, and we may be going down the same path. You could say that the injuries or something or, or you know in, 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 in that's not fair to, to Tata, and that's all true. I mean, but. Neville had his fair share of injuries as well. This injury bug is not new. Yeah, we've been we've been having that problem for a while now. So, but at least Peter, we could say uh, that that percentage probably changed because we got that win in uh, in uh, Kansas City. What was that? Seventy two thousand six hundred and ten people, something like that. Yeah, over seventy two thousand at that game um, for sure. Um, so that was that was definitely. Uh, a cool spectacle that the the team, uh, you know, where where you know, wondering where um, uh, Kelsey was and 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 uh, and uh, Taylor were, you know, wondering where these the the couple it was. Uh, but apparently they were at Coachella. But um, the Kansas City quarterback, what's his name, was there shaking hands, kissing babies with all the uh, Inter Miami players. Mahomes. Yeah, 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 Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, that's it. He was there. Uh, yeah, and. Uh... You know, but I think that was it. I didn't see any other uh, famous people in Kansas City from Kansas City uh, at the game. Um, either way, uh, I I just think it's funny that when Messi scored, the whole stadium roared. You know, it was just like I think even Kansas City fans were just like, "Damn, that was a good goal." Yeah, it, it was. was. A, it was a big. It was a nice goal for sure, and you can appreciate. It. And there was a good amount of Inter Miami fans there, or Messi fans, however you want to call it, that were there representing. Um, Freddie's saying, as far as Taylor Twelman, Freddie Diaz saying, you can tell Taylor is one of those inner Miami haters. Look, he has been for years. He he was pretty upfront in before we got a team saying we should not get a team that we failed and we do not right. deserve to have another MLS team. So yeah, he's a bit of an inner Miami hater forever, but 
stats are stats, right? I don't think he's making up the stats. Stats are stats. And um, I like him because he has a, a, an opinion and he sticks with it. Whether you like the opinion or not is immaterial. Um, I like that he has an opinion as opposed to just being like, you know, eh, wishy-washy and trying to make everybody happy. So <laughs> He's like another, like a regular Peter Brown. No, I'm not that good. But, uh, <laughs> hey, one other thing before we end the show, because we're running, we're running late, is uh, there is talk about a new player coming into the team. And, I mean, there's constantly talk. But this is the latest one that we've heard. And, and, and this guy's name is Giovanni Farena. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. G- Giovanni Farena. He's, uh, I think he's 20 years old. He just signed his contract with Boca Juniors. But from what I understand, he, you know, he was part of their, their development system or whatever. And he's moved up. Signed his, his deal. A central defender. Everybody's been saying, where's our center back, us included, that, um, you know, they keep talking about bringing in um, midfield or they keep bringing in midfield and we need we need a, uh, a center back. It looks like they have a center back on in their sights. He's young. I would imagine, Ed, since he just signed a contract with Boca and we have now a relationship with Boca having just signed uh, Wingant, 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 whatever his name is. Um, I can imagine. Him, what's that? Just call him Cello. Cello. Um, mm-hmm. I can I can imagine you know this guy would come on loan, but I don't know if he's the answer for center back. He hasn't gotten a lot of playing time, and that's why he would go on loan. Is that he's young and he hasn't been able to break through, uh, but he just signed. So. So yeah, that's another you know example of a, another player that could be like Aviles. Aviles is hasn't panned out that well he's sometimes been good sometimes been bad uh we complain that he's tall and he's not good up in the air yeah uh, he gets by shorter guys um but sometimes he does plays like um, at the uh, the kansas city game he was able to take a ball out uh from one of the uh, forwards um so you know anything is better than nothing and uh i'll take the guy i, I prefer like an experienced uh, defender in the back that could organize those guys uh, you know all these young guys that we have and and for uh as defenders so you know let's uh, you know something's better than nothing peter yeah i like this question here made me laugh sports shorts asking are boca juniors in boca florida or boca argentina <laughs> Argentina, but I like that. That was funny. Uh, yeah. So, well, yeah. I, I as far as Avales, he drives me nuts. You know, he he makes boneheaded mistakes left and right, and every once in a while he'll make a good play. Um, you know, that's the youth. You know, I think that's that's still he's got <clears throat> he um, and that's the problem with having so many young players. They make boneheaded mistakes, like. David Ruiz or uh you know so many of our players I mean it, there's such a big drop off between between the star players and and the youth I mean the the age difference I mean it takes time for them to to kind of learn some of that professional fouls instead of just you know doing dumb stuff and getting yourself thrown out of games or 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 yellow card accumulations I think if I remember correctly we have two players now Ed that have four yellow cards that are um could potentially miss a game if they get one more yeah, it's um, uh, Ruiz is one of them, and we also have uh, what was the other player? Oh man, I think Gomez was it Gomez? Was it Gomez? Yeah, I think it was Gomez. I sent you a text message yesterday. Yeah, we were talking it. about it. Yeah, so, yeah, I saw. I heard him mention it on the on the broadcast as well. Lionel Monaco says, "I believe in Avales." All right, well, that's one of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. The jury's out. But that's part of the problem with the young guys. And sometimes it feels like, to me, they overpaid for Avalez. As of right now, I feel like they overpaid for him. So Yeah, and uh, and uh, I like what Mike V is saying that, you know, there's there's all these, uh, oh, it's one girl, one goal that's saying, oh, no, both of them are saying that, yeah, there's there's players in South Amer- other South American countries. It seems like we only want to grab people from Argentina. And uh, there's cheaper guys, which which could play uh, as center back or defensive positions. And, and why don't we go after them? 
I'm going to guess it's because, hey, at this point, with for example, with Boca Juniors, I'd say we have a good relationship with them. And so we're just looking at their players as who can we pick. Um, I'm going to, I'm and, and, you know, and it could also go back to just more Argentinians makes Messi happy. And at the end of the day, we need to make Messi happy for at least one more year. Right. And then we start over again, or we get him for one more year after that. I don't know. It's probably going to have to be for an extra year because they I want him to get that stadium, that new stadium, which I haven't seen much movement on it. I've passed by a couple of times, Peter. And uh, yeah. I, those that what's it called? That drill. They just moved it over a little bit. So maybe they're drilling. I think uh, I will find myself. I'm planning on I'm going to next Thursday and Friday. I'm off. I took two days off because I was planning on spending two days in Disney. But then my daughter ended up having to work on Friday. So we're literally going to just go up on Thursday, go to Disney and come back on Thursday. I've already asked oh, for fr Friday off, so I'm free. I think I'm going to drive down to the stadium on Friday and try to catch them working because quite often when I go there, it's on the weekend. So I think I'm going to try to do my April our, our April report, um, you know, uh, maybe next Friday. So we'll see what's going on then. All right. So Ed, we still haven't really uh, decided here on this episode whether or not we're firing Tata, but according to our chat, I'd say more people want to see Tata go than they want him to stay. I think you and I both are aligned in that he needs more time. Let's not jump to any conclusions. You don't want to be like one of these teams in Mexico that fires our coach after three games. You want to give him a chance. You want to give him time. You got to understand the fact that there are injuries, but I think you got to keep an eye on him. He's on, he's, in my opinion, he's on the hot seat. And speaking of the hot seat, I think tomorrow night uh, there could be a hot seat. I think uh, Tata might find himself on the hot seat yet again, but in, in Spanish. What do you guys have planned tomorrow night? Yeah, Peter, it's uh, at 8.30 p.m. We should be live in Espanol, so uh, be sure to uh, look at our sister uh, channel, Football Miami TV ES. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to. Uh, we're going to be talking about the same stuff, but in Spanish. Um, Marco had a heated uh, discussion with uh, Fernando Fiore. We're going to try to get him on the show. Uh, yeah, they were going left and right. And um, so it's uh, I, talking about Tata, too. I got a feeling Marco's going to be a little more heated than you and me. Yeah, yeah. He's a little more uh, tactical, shall we say. Uh, he's he's uh, you know, a little more those, fiery uh, is what I'm thinking. I think he's just going to be straight up fire Tata. I don't care of next. I, I think, yeah, he, he was kind of like that, but you know, in, in towards the end of his discussion on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, he they he made looks like they agreed on something, so okay, I'd all like right, so we got them. some common ground, maybe, yeah, but let's see, we're gonna see if uh, we can get the Fernando Fio on the show. If not, we'll Look, definitely be talking. Don't about talk this. bad about Boca Juniors or Argentina with Fernando, he's not gonna want to hear it. That's the pipeline, uh, according to uh, Fernando. He's I a think. River Plate fan. Don't oh, River. talk I about it. It's all the same to me. Um, <laughs> I just know he's Argentinian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, everybody. Oh, look at this. This guy just shows up right as we're saying goodbye. Look at that. What are you doing, T Tank? Tank, we missed you, man. All talk right. About, uh, and he would have been incredibly critical uh, towards uh, his favorite goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, his favorite. He loves. I've never yeah. seen somebody love calendar more than than Tank does. He is his number one fan. I want to see Tank wearing the calendar jersey. I think that could happen. Can we make that happen? Ooh, that's a good idea. Let's get try to Tank get in the calendar jersey walking around the stadium. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And make sure to check us out tomorrow night at 830 for this whole thing in Spanish. See you later, everybody.